okay and uh, after that we could uh, try to wrap up what we have got uh, from our lecture okay and uh, today would be my last lecture to be given to you and it is going to be still about the machine learning the last part which is the reinforcement learning okay in particular it is the Q learning that we are talking about and uh, based on my personal experiences actually I've got um, uh, two PhD students uh, that have been working on the Q learning and one suddenly graduated another one at uh, Jan is due to graduate uh, this year uh, this semester so uh, it is quite a useful uh, tool, the technique, and uh, it is, I believe, uh, as you might have already seen, quite easy to understand as well, right? And it is quite natural because uh, that is just like when you raise a child in your family, then you also apply this kind of thing straight away, um, bringing mm -hmm. up uh, children, okay? Or even uh, teaching students, uh, training uh, younger engineers, then yeah, uh, naturally the coach or the trainer would also use the, this kind of the reinforcement learning approach okay um positive reward uh, okay i think we should start now let me share my whole screen and uh, the topic we are covering today would be the uh q learning the application that we're looking at would be the uh, cliff walking uh, from the textbook of Professor Sutton. And yeah, I... uh, yes, we modified just a little bit of the code so that uh, we, we could see better the output uh, displayed. And uh, that is going to uh, show to us uh, deeper into how the Q learning uh, algorithm actually works. Let me show you my screen for the whole screen. Can you see the whole screen? Yes. Okay, right. Uh, so this is the basic idea of the Q-learning that uh, we have been uh, studying from last time. Okay, we have got the learning agent and uh, the learning agent uh, in our scenario so far, we assume that we have only one learning agent, okay? Uh, and that learning agent is trying to interact with its own environment. The environment could be the system of your interest, any system. The system that you will have to do two things with. First of all, you would like to take some control or some actions uh, to that particular environment, to that particular system. And uh, once uh, that environment or that system receives your control actions, then that environment or system would change its status. We refer to that status of the system as a state, okay? And uh, then uh, we are going to try to observe how that system changes its state upon each action that you have decided to take. Together with the state changes that you will try to observe, you also try to collect uh, the reward okay the payoff or some positive objective function okay that you would like to obtain in the long run by interacting with this particular system or environment okay so you take action at time t defined as variable a subscriptive t and then you observe the state changes from s subscriptive t to the S subscriptor T plus one. Okay, so now you have already uh, noticed here that I am using discrete time notion, okay, when defining this reinforcement learning loop. Okay, so this is state at time T and then it changes the state at time T plus one. And then we collect the reward uh, upon the action AT, we collect the reward RT, okay. And our hope is that in the future, okay, if we are running this learning mechanism for a long period of time, then we would like to get the reward, not instantaneous reward, RT, for each T, but the whole reward, 
okay, for the whole time steps, okay, upon the whole sequence of your actions taken, all right, uh, you would like to get that average long run reward to be the highest possible. Making sense? Okay. We are defining here reward in the sense that it is a positive thing that you would like to get and you like to maximize. But of course, in practice, you could also define it, the reward taking the negative value. And in that case, you could interpret the reward as the cost, okay? It's the cost uh, as a result of you taking some action. And in that particular case, then you would like, oh, Ajahn uh, very natural indeed. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, let's continue. Okay, um, where, where am I? Um, uh, uh, oh, negative reward, sorry. <laughs> negative reward. Uh, instead of maximize the positive reward, in that case, you will try to minimize, okay, the negative reward that you get. Because it's the same thing, right? Um, now, uh, in order to keep updating your decisive actions, collecting rewards, observing the changes of the status, you need your learning agent to remember something. And the something that you like to remember would be um, in here, defined in terms of the table, okay? It's a table which we refer to as Q table. And therefore, we refer to this as a Q learning algorithm. So this is a specific example of the RL algorithms, okay? Q learning uh, algorithm uh, allowed us at the agent in order to memorize our past effectiveness in taking actions, observing state, getting reward by using QSA functional, which could be interpreted as the quality. Can you see my slide um, changing, right? Okay, good. Uh, which could be interpreted as the quality, okay? In this case, is the reward, okay? That we would get uh, at the agent. After that agent takes an action A, A, when the system is in state S. Now, this is very important. Um, when you define state, if you would like your Q learning to work, the state must contain all the necessary information that you think would be needed for your strategy, effective control, okay? So when you observe the system in a particular state S, then by using this QSA, you could try to evaluate what then would be the next proper action A to take, all right? So definition of state, okay, is very, very important if you want to apply Q learning here. Likewise, the action, the definition of the action, of course, we are talking about many possible actions, okay? Um, if you do not have any alternative choices for taking actions at all, then yeah, there will be no, no, no point for uh, applying the control mechanism, okay? The action is defined as the element of a set, and that set is called action space. In the same way that we define state of the system in the state space, okay? So you define two things. State space, action space. Now, in our example, we define state space as a discrete set for simplification. Action space, we also define it as a discrete set 
discrete set is a countable set, all right? And uh, we define it's a finite number of elements in that set, okay? Um, however, if your system has a state space that stands continuous range of all the values that could be, be possible in your status of your system, yeah, that is another story, okay? And the action too, if it in fact could be continuous in range, then yeah, okay, that is also another, another scenario, okay? Uh, those scenarios when you have the continuum in the spaces of action and the spaces of the state would be quite problematic for us especially here because what you try to use is q s a and if s could take on anything in the continuous set uncountable set a likewise in the uncountable set then the combination of s values and a values would be huge that's why whenever you want to define your problem to tackle in terms of its status. Whenever you want to define the action of controls that you want to impose upon your system as a continuous action, you always have the problem of space explosion. Explosion, it means that the cardinality of the size of the space of the set explode, okay? And as a result, then, in this case, as you can see, you have the problem with how then you could memorize everything in your Q function. The table size for the QSA storage would explode. Now, um, if we experience that kind of problem, okay, uh, one, one way that uh, I have tried in the past is, okay, you discretize your space, you quantize it. Quantize it, it means that although your practical system is continuous in the possible status or statements, but you quantize your state, okay, in only some discrete approximations or you aggregate, okay, saying if uh, the system is in this range of the uh, continuous status, then never mind, okay, you take the whole lump of that continuum and you represent it only one uh, aggregated state. So in that case, then yeah, okay, you now have the quantized set, okay, for the state space, likewise for the action. You could also define the granularity of your controls. And if you define your granularity, it means that you convert inherently from the continuum to the discrete nature of the control. Making sense? All right. Um, now, uh, we would like today okay, to see the code for this scenario, cliff walking scenario. And for the cliff walking scenario, by the textbook of Professor Sutton. It stated the problem as follows. You've got a starting point somewhere over here. You see my mouse, right? Okay. And uh, you would like to start from that position and you walk by making a sequence of decisions on the steps to go up, right, left, or down, given the current state of yours. Eventually, you try to reach the goal, which is that position here. However, in between the start and the goal, there is a cliff along that line, okay, which links line of sight from start to go, which means that you cannot walk straight in that path because you get off the cliff and then you die. Now, this is a game, okay? 
um, the game it means that when a player dies, a player is reborn. Okay, in real life that is not the case. Okay, um, so in our assumption here, uh, when a player or when the agent, okay, accidentally gets off the tape, he comes back to the starting point and try to perform, okay, his next trial. All right, uh, from the starting point until reaching the goal, from the starting point until you die because of getting off the cliff, we define that as an episode. So in your code, then you will see that we would run many, many episodes. Episodes, uh, each of them is called learning episode because each time that the player accidentally gets off the cliff, he dies, then he learns that he shouldn't do that. How then to force him to learn that, okay, if you're here already, then you shouldn't go that way. We have to define negative reward. That is big, big negative value if you get off the cliff, okay? At the same time, what we also want to have here is you take the path that is the shortest path from the start to the goal. So each time that you take a step, there should also be some incremental cost. So we therefore we define two values of the cost. Minus one as a reward, so it's a negative reward, so it's a cost. Minus one if the player, the agent is still on the way to the goal but not yet reaching the goal. Minus 100 if he gets off the cliff. Okay. Now you may ask, why? Why would someone would get off the cliff? Well, we assume that the player doesn't know the future state as a result of the current action until that action has already been decided and take and the consequent state then would be shown to the player. So if I am here in our code, I assume that that guy over here does know that going up he dies until he really decided to go up and then he died then he knows that he dies, all right? So that, so that is the assumption that we have in here. In more practical cases, if the agent can look ahead a little bit to see and try to predict, okay, what is going to happen to him, then that is a different scenario, all right? Although we would allow the agent to look ahead into the immediate future to see what is going to happen next. But in the control of the stochastic system, the random system, it's very often and it's very practical that, okay, you know that if you, for example, over here, and you decide to go to the right, and then you see that they go to the right, you're perfectly okay, okay? Um, however, with a small chance, okay, going to the right in your decision that you intend to, but there might be some um, random event. For example, you go to the very high mountain and if it is above a certain altitude level, like five kilometers, something like that, then uh, you could get sick, mountain sickness, and then there could be some disorientation. In your brain, you might want to go to the right, but the body due to the mis disorientation, okay, so the real consequent action from that decision, rather, okay, you want to go there, but in fact, you go there, then you die anyway. 
with some small changes. Okay, so in control of the stochastic system, random system, that is all, always happening. All right, so it means that even though you would try to foresee what is going to happen next, and you think that this decision is great, but the consequence due to the randomness, it might not be the way you wish it to be. All right. So I try to uh, allow you, even before we dive into the source code, to think in terms of the concept first. If you would like to extend this concept into the practical world, then how would you do it? Okay. Now, let me also um, mention one last thing before now we jump into the source code. We define the state in two dimensions, over here and over there. So there are two axes, okay? And uh, um, in the source code, we are going to refer to that point as zero, zero, zero comma zero. Okay, and if you go down, then uh, it's, it's positive value. If you go there, it's positive value in each uh, of the coordinate values. All right, so this is like a convention when you are talking about like GUI programming, something like that. Okay, so the top left would be zero, zero. Okay, and then uh, you go this way, then you uh, increase it positive one at a time. Okay, you go that way, you increase this positive one at a time in the other dimension of the coordinate. All right, zero, zero, and then go to something over there. Okay, now, okay, let's look at our course view. Um, this is our course view here, and uh, um, this is the source code in .py that I have exported from the Python notebook into the Python program. And uh, this is the um, this is the uh, to Python notebook exported to the PDF, and I have also uh, put some highlighted colors for you, so that you'll be able to look at the code uh, more easily and understand it more conveniently for you. Okay. Um, so yeah, feel free to check it out later on, but today then we just go straight into the code. The code is over here and it is in the IPython notebook, but today I am not using that one, okay? Um, I would use this one, not the one, okay? So if you download that one, oh, sorry, I am coming back. Now I will touch my computer. Okay, if you download this one, then you get the .py, okay? The code over here. And uh, uh, you could just open it by, in this case, I'm going to use PyCharm, all right? So um, let me just switch this away. Um, yeah, okay, so I have already put the code in this directory. And uh, allow me to open PyCharm. One moment, please. Uh, can you see PyCharm window coming up? Okay, yeah, that's good. Right. And now it is loading. Okay, just wait a little bit. Right, and uh, this is the file in here. Ah, uh, here, right, okay. So I just uh, double click this one. So this is a clip walking. Okay, let's go to see the beginning of the code. Okay, right. 
So now we have got the code over here. And uh, um, first of all, let me just try to run it once so that we can see what the output of the code is uh, going to be. And now it runs. Right, so over here then you could see that we have now got a lot of outputs, okay? We also have the output at the console down here as well. Let me uh, close. Uh, this is also the part of the output, okay? So um, it's going to print out the action, okay? The action that's been found to be the best so far from the learning, okay? And the action is going to be here encoded in terms of D, it means you decide to go down, U to go up, U to go up, and R to go right, and L to go left, okay? And you see over here that there are one, two, three, four, five, okay? Um, uh, rows, okay, of this table here. And uh, uh, each row actually corresponds to um, here. Let me show you this one. Okay, right. This is a starting point, okay? And that is the goal that you would like to go, right? And then uh, this is the, the, the area that you would allow the agent to walk, okay? And uh, from that starting point to this goal, in between, there is a cliff, all right? And uh, uh, from what we have seen over here, it is actually the result of the first episode. The first episode takes almost 1,000 actions before it reaches the first time at the goal, okay? Um, within this almost 1,000 actions, uh, the agent has made a lot of mistakes, okay? And over here, I plot all the movement trajectories of that agent. So it could walk here, okay, it go there, it go there, it comes here, it comes back, it goes there, and then it decides to go up, which is a thing, okay? In that case, when you decide to go up, when it is at the cursor position, you could see the cursor, right? Then uh, the next state to be updated would be, okay, you decide to go up, so you die. And if you die because you get off the cliff, then you start again at the starting point in our assumption, right? When you die, you go to the starting point, okay? And then you make decisions again. So you see that um, uh, from all the positions over here, okay, uh, this time of first learning episode, it seems that the player, once it is in each point along the cliff edge, uh, it always, at least once, fall off the cliff, and therefore it dies, okay, and then it goes over there. Right, and uh, uh, they actually this guy actually goes everywhere randomly, okay, and therefore spans the whole the whole walkable area. Okay, there's a uh, zero, one, two, three, four. So there are five, okay, in the rows. Okay, five in the rows correspond to this one. This is row one, row two, row three, row four, row five. All right. Um, so, the optimal action that we have seen after a lot of episodes, this is the first episode, the next episode is here, but I do not print every learning episode, I print every 20, okay? So after it learns another 20 episodes, reaching then 
they go for 20 more times, then this is the, the learning part, okay? This is a walking part. So you see that uh, after 21 episodes, um, it never goes from, it never goes uh, uh, off the cliff and then go back that way at all. And uh, the next 20 is like that. And the next 20, so you see that uh, when we increase the number of learning episodes, okay, allowing more time for this agent to learn. So uh, it reduces, okay, the randomness in the chosen walking path. And therefore uh, the length, okay, is shorter and shorter for the whole path in order to uh, reach the goal from the starting point. All right, so uh, in here it takes uh, 61 episodes and at the end uh, it takes 30 actions, all right, 30 actions in order to reach the final goal. But still you see that this 30 actions, is it the minimum possible? No, it's not because the minimum possible, it would have to be this one. The minimum possible, you have to go here and then you come here. And after that, you go all the way right, okay? And towards that end that you go up, all right? If you do that, then it's going to take uh, not 30 actions, but because this is 14, so it's going to take about half as much, all right? So that is the idea of the outputs that we will get from this two learning algorithm. Now let's dive into the code, okay, and in order to see um, what, what is happening there. So, allow me to close all this. Okay, and uh, allow me to uh, clear this one. So, everything is clear, okay. And uh, uh, let me start from the first line here. So, we import, okay. Uh, in order to go through the code together, uh, what I am going to do is I would use the debug mode with the breaking point. So over here, this is a breaking point that I could toggle on and off. All right. And uh, um, right, right now, you are still with me, right? And you could hear my voice clear enough, right? Okay, if you've got any problem in hearing my voice, just uh, alert me anytime, all right? Unmute your microphone as I said, great. So I set the breaking point here and let's try to go through the code one line at a time, all right? So uh, here I press the button, okay? So that, so that we run it. And now, okay. Uh, this line is highlighted, which means that it is waiting for us to allow it to be executed. Okay, yes, okay, let's give it a go. Let's step over that line executed. Now it moves to the next line. And right now, okay, we have got NumPy, okay, um, already imported, and we would refer to that as NP. And likewise, okay. Yes. I like to ask you one thing, like uh, when I ran PyCharm, they are uh, saying that uh, I need to add a configuration before running it. So what's that? Ah, uh, this is the first time that you run it, right? Yes. So no need to import uh, any configuration uh, because uh, that, that option would be used only when you have already got like some previous installation. And you have already defined uh, your preference in configuring things in the UI and so on and so forth. And you would like to import that configuration back into your new installation. But if it's your first installation, yeah, you can yeah. just skip it. Yeah, that's why. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Right. Um, yes. Uh, no, now we go next. Okay, so we're going to plot as you say, right? So we import over here. Uh, my plot later, pi plot, and we can refer that as a PLT for the pi plot. Right. 
now we have got two things already. Um, the packages that we can use. And let's define them over here. Um, this is the walking area. We define it that we would like to have the height equal to five, okay? And once we execute it, so you see the variable there, okay? Well, height is five. And well, width is 15, okay? The starting point is at zero, comma zero. The goal is at what the top right, okay? So it's zero, and uh, this one is for width minus one, okay? The index starts from zero, all right? And that's why you need to have minus one. If you would like to have 15 steps to the right-hand side in order to reach the goal. I defined it now. Um, what we have also is over here, well, height, well, width, and all the stuff there. Before the start. Okay. Now let's define the um, learning parameters. Okay, in the Q learning, first of all, we define the epsilon. Okay, um, this is the probability that you are going to go for not the best. Okay, so far action from your Q table, but uh, you will choose randomly any action. Okay, so that, that is the probability of having the exploration mode of taking the action. We set it here to 10%. Alpha, that is the learning rate, okay, for the step size of the learning that we like to update, okay, the value of the Q. Gamma, uh, which is in this case set to one. Um, this is just the discount factor, okay, that we use in order to take into account the um, future reward, okay, given the next future state after you take the current action. Okay, so we set it to one. You could try changing all this by yourself. Okay, these are the values from zero to one. Episode deaths over here, we go 100 episode deaths at most, okay, before we start. And uh, uh, episode deaths for each plot. Okay, over here we set to 20 episodes before we plot, okay, one plot, as you can see, okay, from the output example a moment ago, right? So it's going to plot every 20 learning episodes for us, the walking path that uh, it takes. And let's define action, okay, action up, I encoded it as number zero, action down as one, action left, Action right. Um, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, and we define actions over here to collect all those actions. Now, the reason that uh, prop substance is defined in like this, yeah, it's just a convenient, okay. Uh, you would like later on to refer to your action as the variable with some nice um, meaning, okay, like action up action down, left and right. But uh, when you want to refer to a, um, the, uh, the value of that, the string doesn't, uh, the string is not so good, okay? So you try to encode it as numbers instead so that you can use it more conveniently, like you use it in order to refer to the index of the array or something like that, okay? So later on, therefore, you see action up, action down. And remember that those are just converted then into integers, right, 0, 1, 2, 3. And over here, next, is the whole big thing, okay, so let me put it here so that you see better. Okay. The whole big thing here, we define a function, okay, and the whole function is over there, okay, for this so-called step function, okay, and uh, uh, the step function, let me tell you roughly first what it is going to do. Um, it's a function, which means that it's going to take input and it's going to return outputs, all right? A uh, step function is going to take two inputs. The first one is a state, which means it's a current state, okay? And the action, all right, uh, that you are going to take, okay? If the environment is in this current state. And if you take this action, 
then the state function is going to return to us. What then that action is going to change the state at the present to the state in the next time step. Okay, the change from state into the next state. Okay, and with that action, then what is going to be the reward? Okay, to be given as a result. So this is state function. All right, uh, from S T A T then you get st plus one and rt all right now we define that step function and we are inside them okay there are some stuff over there okay which we are going to that one later on when we dive into the code but for the time being then let's move on so i would just step over Okay, so now that function has already been defined. Okay, step. Now, it defines another function here. Okay, and this function is called choose action. As you might guess from the name of the function already, right? Choose action is just going to choose an action. All right, it chooses an action based on the current state. Okay, that the agent observes and it chooses the action based on the past experience that's already been memorized in that Q table. And the Q table here is going to be Q underscore value variable, right? And uh, then, well, because this function is so short, so let's take a look at the content of the function a little bit moment as well. Um, in order to choose the action given the state and the present Q value in your table, okay, your experience in the past, there are two motives that you could choose to do. The first one is, well, you choose it randomly. And you do that with the probability of epsilon, okay? So when this random number generates okay, from zero to one, okay, uh, with the probability here, um, epsilon, okay, oh, sorry, uh, this is a, um, uh, it's going to return zero or it's going to return one with the probability, okay, uh, of epsilon to return one with the probability of one minus epsilon to return zero, okay, and so this is the um, random number zero or one, if it is equal to one, then you do that thing. Okay. And uh, or else, okay, with probability of one minus epsilon, then um, which is the majority of the chances that you have, okay, uh, what you are doing here is you will choose the best possible action, okay. Um, let me go back to what we used to have a moment ago. Okay. What is the best possible action in here? Okay. Um, if you have got uh, our table, mm -hmm. if you have got QSA, okay, the best possible action A is the action that is going to maximize, okay, maximize that function Q, S A, okay. So it's the action A that is going to maximize that function, all right. Even that you are in that particular state S, okay. And this is exploitation strategy. So that line over here simply is going to, it's a very, very long line, all right? But as you can see that, yeah, it's just going to return, yeah, what is it, maximum value, and then I want to use it, okay? Um, and it's going to return the action that is going to maximize the value in the Q table, okay? Even the current state, 
okay, over here, right, state, and you have got x and y, right, the main term, so state, given by zero, state, given by one, okay, um, and the state actually is the input over here, okay, making sense, all right, and the q value is just another input here. So this is transaction, let's define it, and another function, q learning, Okay, so this function is just going to perform, okay, the Q learning algorithm. We go to this one later on by diving into the function. So let me just define it for the time being. Okay, so those are all the functions that we would need in order to run our code. Okay, let's go to the first line of the code. This is the first line of the code. And uh, in here, what we have got, let this up just a bit, okay. First of all, we define the reward, okay, variable, so that we have got some, okay, counters, okay, that we could update things later on. Uh, that is a reward from the key learning, and right now I have defined the reward, okay, by all zeros, okay. Um, and the value here, let us see, rewards Q learning here, okay? It's easier to see over here, right? So we have got it as the index array, okay, to reward uh, a vector, right? A very long vector, okay? And the value all zeros in this case, okay? And uh, the number of elements here is 100, okay? Uh, 99, okay, and this is zero index, the first, okay, 100 episodes, okay. Um, okay, uh, next, then, we define actions to go, and uh, likewise, uh, okay, I put it here, yeah. Um, so it's, it's set to zeros as well. Okay, so this is going to be the actions, right? You remember zero, one, two, three, right? Up, down, something like that, that we have encoded as numbers that you, that you could put there, okay? So this is actions to, 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 to be remembered. And uh, next, we are in that line, Q learning. Okay, let's execute it. Now we have got um, uh, the, the table. Okay, that we are going to keep. Let's see this one. Q for the Q learning. Okay, here we go. Right, so this. So we define it over here. As you can see, uh, this Q table, um, we have got the Q table, QSA, right? QSA. So uh, we need to have. Um, over here, you see 5 and 15, right? So that is the uh, locations, right? Uh, on this x axis, uh, y axis, okay? The x axis go that way, the y axis go that way, right? Uh, for the uh, walking area. And uh, we could go this way, five steps. We could go that way, 15 steps in our walking area. So we define for all of them, five and 15, okay? And A, A, uh, we could take four actions, right? Okay, uh, so we have four over here, right? So that is uh, our Q value, which is Q, S, and A. Now, let's go to the next line. The next line is here. Um, it's going to enter a for loop, right? And in this for loop, it is going to go to each episode i, okay, for the total number of episodes that you would like your agent to learn, all right? So let's get here. Now i is equal to zero, so you enter now the first learning episode. And uh, what it is doing here is just going to execute that Q learning function, right? Q learning function uh, using the uh, value that you have 
um, initialize over here as your initial uh, field table. And at this moment, you don't have any experience. Remember here in the past, so all zeros. Okay. And uh, uh, by entering this one, then uh, you're going to return uh, all the upwards thing. Now, uh, let's jump into the function. I always use step over, step over, step over. It means that, okay, we go from current line to the next line, all right? Uh, but in this case, it is a few learning function that we would like to go into the detail, okay? So instead of using step over as before, now I would like to use this one, step into, okay? So now I am going to step into that few learning function and to see line by line in that function how it works. All right. So I change from step over to step into and now I press it. Okay. So right now we jump into this few learning function. And inside this function, then straight away, you see that we have got the input of the function, all right? So we got over here um, the Q value, okay? And uh, the step size, which has not been specified when we execute this function, okay? When we execute this function down below a moment ago, you see, we specify there only one input argument, okay? And that input argument, for the Q value of the Q learning, um, we take it here. Okay, this is the Q value, that is the first input argument. As for the second input argument over here, step size, okay, we have not specified explicitly. It means that we are going to use the default value. Okay, so uh, in defining this Q learning function, the default value of the second input argument, step size, is defined as alpha, and alpha has been defined as a global variable up in the row, okay, as um, 0 0.1 or something like that, I think. Um, what is the value of alpha? Let's see the value of alpha. Yeah, step size is 0 0.5, sorry, not 0 0.5, okay, so that is the step size. Now, okay, let's go line by line, okay. And then I could change now to step over because I just want to go from one line to the next line. The state is at the start and the starting point, we define it as a zero comma zero. Okay, that's the location where we start. State test in order to remember the walking part. Okay, so I collected, okay, the history of the state. Okay, action. Action test. Okay, now I define it. Uh, it's a history of the action to be taken. Okay, um, and the words. Okay, number of actions so far that have been taken zero because we have not started yet. While the state is not yet reaching the goal. Okay, we're not going to get out of this while. Um, so this is just going to keep looping until eventually you reach the final goal, okay? And then you success. You have the success to operate, and that uh, completed your your episode of learning, okay? Um, but if you're not at the goal yet, and of course you're not, because at this moment the state is. Um, well, let me try to. I like this one, okay, and I click mouse to the to the to the right hand side, and then uh, I evaluate that expression. Okay, so say it right now is it not equal to go? Okay, let's evaluate it, and the result is true. Yeah, okay, because right now the state, okay. Um, the state is equal to this one, zero comma zero, all right? While the goal, it is equal to zero comma 14. So they're not the same, all right? Uh, so what I did, 
at this moment is just yeah okay I would like to evaluate this one uh, in my um, like a scratch sheet okay uh, but over here uh, this line has not been executed yet all right yeah I like to uh, show many features that you might find it useful when you walk through your source code later on okay um, so this one is not yet true, it means that you jump into the loop, all right? And then uh, the number of actions that used to be um, zero, now you add by one, okay? So when you execute it, then the number of actions over here, it becomes one from zero, okay? Actions, then we can to choose it, all right? And over here, again, we enter another function, all right? Choose action given the current state and the current Q table in this variable. If you would like to jump into that function, then you step into, okay, you step into that function. But if you just want to execute that line, then you just step over it, okay. Well, this is interesting point. So maybe I mark it like that first. So maybe I would like, yeah, uh, go there again. Okay. So I, yeah, for the time being, I just step over. It. So I apply that choose action in order to choose something for me. Okay. Yep. Now it takes action number three. What is action number three? Um, action number three, I think we define it somewhere here. Um, oh, here we go, right? Oh, bad luck. Well, it shouldn't, right? Um, action number three, it chooses to go to the right, which means that it's going to die, right? Um, unfortunately, yeah, that is the action that has been taken at first, okay? Um, the first time, then we die straight away, yeah. So the next day, okay, if you, now at the start, you take that wrong action, you die, okay? So the next state, then what is going to be the case? Let's execute it, step over. You come back to the start, you see? Zero comma zero. And the reward that you get, because you die, so you get one minus 100, okay, as the reward. And again, okay, this is the step. Okay, which is a function. Maybe it is interesting for us. So let's just take a break for so that we can come back over there. Um, the reward, yeah, bad luck. Whatever reward that you used to have so far, zero, right? Yep. Uh, but now you have minus 100. So you have to execute that one. Okay. Okay, now the reward becomes minus 100. Okay. Not a good choice. Um, and now, uh, you are trying to learn from mistake. Remember right now we are in the Q learning, okay? We're trying to learn from mistake. Yeah, this is one line, okay? Which corresponds to that one equation we have, right? We update the Q value, okay? We update the Q value according to the equation. Um, and there we go. This is one equation that we have. Okay, um, so we going to update the value of Q at that particular state S, and right now it's a starting point. Okay, action A in this case, you go to the right hand side. Okay, and then you try to update that from the old value, the old value we have not yet so far is zero, okay? And uh, with some weight, alpha, okay, for the, um, the learning step side, right? Based on the reward that we have just obtained, in this case, we have just got minus 100, bad luck, uh, plus the future reward, okay, that you get. If you take that action, then you go to the next future state, st plus one. Unfortunately, in this case, the next future state, uh, you go nowhere because you die straight away. So this one also is that uh, starting point. 
by pairing. And based on that starting point, then you try to evaluate from that new starting point, what then is going to be um, the, best, the best possible reward that you get from the whole actions possible from the new starting point. And uh, so far at that particular test, then you have got for that new starting point, okay, if you go to the right, you take minus 100, okay, as your Q value. If you go to in other directions, then you still have zero. So the maximum here is zero, okay, as the best so far. Okay, My, minus 100 is not good. So zero is still better, right? So this one is zero, that one is zero. It means that at this moment, the value of Q to be updated in there would simply be the new reward that we have got, okay, minus 100. And alpha is chosen in this case to be zero by five. So from 100 negative, then you get 50 negative that you would remember. All right, um, let's see the code. Right, um, yeah, and this is just the implementation of that node. So I'm just executing. Right, here we go, okay. So now we have got um, the value of the Q that has already been updated, okay, according to our equation moment ago. And what, what is the value of the Q then in this case? Yeah, okay, let's try to see this one just a bit. Um, yeah, minus 50, all right? So right now it's been updated to be minus 50 as expected. And then uh, we continue, okay, update the state to the next state, okay, and then we remember the history of the state by appending the state that we have already got in our state, all right? And uh, then you append the action, all right? And uh, yeah, okay, now we're getting out of that function and we're coming back, okay? Uh, yeah, the first time, yeah, not, not good. Okay, you die. Okay, um, so the state, you do not reach the goal yet, so you have to get into the loop again. All right, and then you're going to choose the action. Action right now is one. Okay, let's see what is that action one going to be. Oh, this is good choice. Okay, action one, right? It means that you're at the starting point and then you decide to go down, which is okay, right? Actually, it's the only action that you could like, get out of the starting point without dying, okay? So let me step over to the next slide, okay? Um, so uh, now the next state is one zero, okay? Because now you go down and the reward is minus one, okay? You update the reward again. You update the queue again, all right? Um, what is the value that now we have? Let's see, the value of the Q that we now have got. Okay, so that is the value of the Q, okay? Minus 0 0.5, again, because alpha is 0 0.5, right? Although we have the minus one, but yeah, you subtract, uh, you, you divide, you multiply by alpha, which is 0. Yeah, so I think that you have got some, some idea, okay? And then it keeps doing that, right? Uh, multiple times. And it's not uh, very efficient that I would just click step over, step over, one lie at a time. Uh, how about I just want to go to, I just want to go to um, what, whatever point that I have already set as a next trip point, okay? So, uh, Okay, that I am somewhere here and I would like to go to the next breakpoint okay, here, then I will just run this in the program. Okay, so just going to stop at the next breakpoint for us. Okay, and if I click over here again, right, let's go to the next breakpoint. And if I click again, then you see it, it would stop only at the lines that we have got the breakpoint. Okay, which is convenient for us. Okay, we do not need to. So I would just um, 
yeah, let's see what is going to happen. I don't care about this one anymore, okay? And uh, maybe I would like to, um, yes, uh, see uh, this one, the number of, the number of actions right now is equal to seven, okay? So focus on that one, okay? And then I have only one bullet point over here, so I click only this one. So each time that I click, then you see that the number of actions incremented by one, right? So I click one at a time. It means that I take one more action, one more action, okay, one more action. And as a result, you see over here that um, I also update the history of my action that I have taken, you see? And I also update the history of the state that I have visited over there, right? Okay, making sense, all right. Um, so I click doing that uh, all the way to, um, well, um, I do not want to watch this one anymore. Okay, uh, let's go to the whatever next break point that I would have when I could get out of that. Um, where am I? Okay, right now we're here, right? How uh, about the next break point? Then, yeah, let's just come. Okay. So, I resume. Okay, now I already get out of that function, the learning function. Okay, and uh, um, so what we have already got so far is the reward. Okay, and the reward that we've got as the output. Okay, right now it's uh, always a very bad reward. Maybe we die many times, all right? Um, minus 2540, okay? And the number of actions that it takes is uh, 956. And the state his, the state his is uh, like a long, long, long uh, history of where we have been, okay? And the action that we have taken, that like so many actions, almost a thousand. Okay, so that is the the first time that we have that we have done. Okay, our learning experience. The rewards now going to that we have got from our episode would be kept. Okay, in the reward of the learning. So we just execute it. All right, and the actions as well. Okay, the number of actions then we keep it. Okay, and then um, this part of the code it is just going to check if the current episode i, right now is the first episode i is equal to zero, okay, uh, divided by the episode that's for each plot, which is, this one is set to 20, okay, and if it's divided by 20 and the remainder, okay, so we divide it uh, with the modulo, okay, percentage which means the division taking the remainder, so it's a modulo operation. And if you divide by 20 and you have no remainder, okay? In this case, yeah, I zero, then you divide by anything, then you have zero, right? The next time that it's going to be zero would be, um, you have got I equal to 20, all right? After 21 episodes, it's never going to happen. Um, so for every 20 episodes that's of learning, you are going to execute that part of the code, all right? And uh, in this case, yeah, let's step into this one. We define x, we define y from the state history, okay? The state history, remember the walking part, okay? Um, one moment, please, okay, over here, right? Let me view it here, so that is uh, easier for you. Okay, this is uh, uh, the walking part, all right? Uh, from zero, zero, the first time we remember that we die straight away, right? So from zero, zero to zero, zero. The second time you remember that the first action, we go down, right? So one, zero. And then it happens that we go down again, and after that we go to the right, and then we are coming from two, one, and two, one, one. Okay, so we go up, and then we, and after that, yeah, we go to the cliff, and then we die again. You see, right? So you see that there are many times that we're going to accidentally die, okay, die, and this one, after we die, then we die again straight away, 
Yeah, it means we do not remember that you used to die from the start by going to the right hand side. But then you do it again or you repeat the mistake. Okay, many times. Right. Uh, so from that, okay, uh, state history of the walking path, then you take the first dimension to x, the second dimension to y, and then you plot a new figure, okay, assign, and then you plot x versus minus y, okay, this minus y, minus y is on, on, on that side, it's on that side. Um, step over, right, okay, and then we assign some time code, all right, and uh, um, that is it, okay, for the first episode. Now we go for the second episode, okay, I becomes now equal to one, okay, and then we do the same, okay, we take into that pre-learning, all right, um, now let's jump into that function here, okay, and then I think in the key learning, let's go to um, this one. Tools action we have already seen already, but this one not yet step, right? Okay. Uh, given that you are in the current step, here you take that action there, then what is going to be the next step and what is going to be the reward? Let's go to see inside the function. How to go inside the function? We just use step into, okay? So now we go into the step function. Now in the step function, all right? Uh, let's see the code here. Right now we in step zero, zero. Action is one. What is action one? Action one go down, okay, good. Uh, then it means that we not die. Uh, so first of all, the state, Okay, the state is zero comma zero. Then we take that state uh, into i and j. Okay, so i is zero, j is zero. Okay, and then we check if the action is in each of the possible categories of the action, and then for each of those, then we define the next step. All right, right now the action is equal to one, which means that it is not action up, okay? So when you uh, evaluate that expression, it's false, okay? Which means that it's going to jump to this one. Let's see. Is it going to the left? No, it's not going to the left. Is it going to the left is equal to two, but right now action is equal to one, okay? So not this condition. Going to the right, the right is straight, action is one, no? How about this one? Uh, action is one, and then this one is one. So yes, correct. So it's going to, right? So uh, what then are we going to do? Okay, uh, we can to update the next step. The next step based on the current action that you are taking, right? And based on the current state that you are in, right? The current state right now we take in x and y dimension to be i and j respectively. And uh, over here, then you could imagine that okay, you're in zero, zero, and you go down as an action, then you will have to update over here. Okay, the second one, j, here remain the same, okay, unchanged. But for the first one, then you update it by incrementing by one, okay. So you have i that you increase by one. You also notice that uh, we have the minimum operator here, okay? Just in case that um, if you uh, increase i by one and it, uh, beyond the, the ball height, okay? Um, the ball height minus one, okay? Which is uh, the boundary of the area that you can walk to. What is then going to happen? If there is such a case, okay, you have the action that um, forces you to go against the boundary, okay? Well, no, we do not uh, allow that. So it means if you take that action, then you remain exactly the same place at the back boundary, okay? So you cap it to the minimum between this one and that one, okay? So if after incrementing by one, then you go beyond the walk able area then knock 
we just need habit to that uh, model of the uh, value in the graph, right? And uh, this is for the go down, as well go uh, go right, go left, go up. Then yeah, we divide it in a similar style, okay? So like go up, then it go down, we plus one, go up, we minus one. But again, right at the boundary, okay? When you uh, go down, then the boundary is, is at that one. So you could increase too much. So you have to uh, up about it by that value by using the mean operator. But if you go up, then it could be possible that when you subtract by one, then you go negative. Okay, which means that that is also not possible, right? So you just take the max operator, which is zero, in order to um, set it to zero. If you would like to go negative, no, you cannot. Okay. Likewise, for the go left and go right, okay, then you have the max and mean operator with the um, the bound of the walkable area, okay, that you see in the proper way. Right. And then we now um, set the reward, all right, to be minus one initially. But, okay, if this thing happens, okay, what is this thing? This thing is going to be the condition that eventually is going to reset the reward instead of minus one. We can to reset it to be minus 100. Okay. And also, we set the next state as the starting point. So, guess what is this condition? Then? Well, this condition is simply that you die. Okay, you get off the cliff in this case. All right. So, if you get off the cliff, it means that. Um, you act. Uh, you take the action going up when you are just below. Okay, the cliff, and you cannot go up. And uh, we express it as i is equal to one. Okay, and j is um, from one and up to world with minus two. Okay, so those are the coordinates of i and j when you are just right next to the cliff. Okay. Or you are at the starting point, okay, as we used to be, and you decided wrongly to take the action to go to the right hand side so you get off the cliff straight away. Okay, the first step from the start. All right, so in our case here, um, no, we don't die, right? So it's going to jump from that one straight into this one. Oh. Okay, yeah, then we jump on it. Okay, and then the next step is one zero and the reward is minus one. Okay, we don't die. Here for the price for one walk instead. And then we get out of that um, uh, step. Okay, and then we could continue. Right, so I think that that is uh, basically all in the code. Let me now. Uh, go to the very final step in here, right? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I just think to run it like that. Oh, one moment. Okay, let's set that away. Okay, done. Okay, so right now uh, we have already completed a lot of episode X, and then we're now going to uh, plot okay, all the results. Uh, the plot has already been defined in here, but there's no plot just yet. Okay, uh, the plot is going to be shown to us when we execute that command plot. But show. Okay, so let's do it. Right. So now we have all the plots. Okay, being plotted for us. Um, the last plot is particularly interesting. For all the other plots, we have already seen it already, right? Episode one. You die many times. Ah, but you lucky here, right? Over here you don't die. Over there you don't die, right? So you just go somewhere and then you succeed. And uh, after twenty episodes, then thirty-six actions. After that, forty actions. Well, not very good. Um, actually, we shouldn't go this way, right? And then you're coming back, right? But this is a learning process. You see, it's a learning process. Um, 37 actions after 60 episodes, 
But if you do it many more times, this is a result. Okay. Um, uh, the, the number of episodes is there and the number of actions that will be taken. Okay, so uh, if you plot, uh, look at only the orange one, the number of actions, right, at first episode, it is very, very uh, large number of actions that you need to take before you have the first success, okay? But later on, you learn, okay? And eventually, it is over there, okay? Um, yeah, so that is the convergence of the learning, okay? And uh, at the end, uh, it's the end, right? Let's see the reward that we show here. After, at the end, after 100 episodes, it's, this is the reward, the negative reward that you get in order to reach the goal, okay? So you see that you could maximize the reward the greatly over time from very much negative, okay? Because you die many times and later on then, okay, you could improve it. And finally, it converges somewhere over there. Okay. And lastly, uh, the part here is just to print out the code, um, uh, print out the actions that you have done at the optimality of your learning policy. Okay, so we just step over to see everything. Yeah, and you print it. Okay, we execute that print already. Where is it? It's in here in the console. Print that string, and after that, you can to print the QQ learning. QQ learning is, uh, let's see, in the debugger. QQ learning, where is it? Here we go. Um, QSA for all the action, all actions. Let's do it in a way, I think. So, so you have got it in here, right? Um, so that is the table that you've got. Okay, for S, uh, S in two dimension, right? QSA. And that for A, you have got um, this one, okay, this one, right, and that one. Yeah, so th those would be the value of the Q uh, table that uh, we have got uh, eventually, all right? And then let's try to print the optimal policy. Let's run to the end. So that is the optimal policy printed. Okay, as U D uh, up, down, left, right. Okay, this is just a little right. Okay, so basically that's all about the Q learning with the code. What I suggest you to try doing is the following. First of all. Well, pay with this code by changing it, okay? The area that you would walk, okay? Uh, if you increase the value, the, the area, okay? Then let's see uh, how, uh, how slow, how fast, then your agents can to learn, okay? Secondly, the starting point, it doesn't need to be that location, the goal, it doesn't need to be could be anywhere else, all right? Thirdly, um, all the learning parameters that you could use epsilon for the probability of exploration, alpha, the step size for the learning, gamma, the feature, okay, discount factor, episode bits that you like to take. Uh, this is just a box. Um, and then lastly, you could change over here, okay? This is the condition that defines the cliff, all right? So far, the cliff is along the edge, but it is certainly possible that you change it somewhere here, right? Um, that, well, uh, if the next state, okay, if I could change it, like, uh, 
here if the next value is equal to two uh, somewhere okay that you define in here right like a three comma two or whatever right um, and you define it there uh, as a trap okay then uh, you also set the reward to be minus 100 okay and you reset the next page to be the start again so you could further define that over here um, some other locations okay that would also return okay uh, the agent to the start point that is um, it does like a, a, it's a bomb or uh, something like that, right? If there's a mine and then you step over the bomb, so it exploded and you die, okay? And then let's see if the learning algorithm could like a detour around that bomb area, the mine area, okay? Yeah, same equation. If no, I think um, that should be our constant, right? Uh, for the machine learning and the key learning. I have one last suggestion for you, okay? Um, the machine learning is huge, okay, for the domain of the knowledge, okay? And uh, uh, if we go to this one, all right? Um, stat 